All right, back for the Chapter 8 videos on continuous probability distributions. We see all the, the uh, topics here. It was a long chapter, two-test chapter, um, but I'm just going to pick the greatest hits questions of, of these ones, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what uh, shows up on the exam. Uh, we see all the uh, topics there. Let's get into an example. The amount of money that a uh, female prom goers spend on their prom night outfit is normally distributed with mean uh, 220, standard deviation 80. So right away that tells us that X, which is the amount spent, amount spent, it is also normally distributed with mean 220, standard deviation 80. Uh, and that tells us something, right? That tells us the shape of the distribution. It tells us things like 68% uh, of the people are within one standard deviation and so on. What is the probability that a randomly selected girl uh, spends less than $100? Somebody spends less than $100. And how we did this was we standardized it, right? We calculated the z-score. Um, and I don't use standard error in this one because I don't have a, a sample mean. 100 was my x. My mean was 220. Uh, 220. And my standard deviation was 80. And that gives me a z score of negative 1.5. Chart lookup now. It's already a less than. I don't have to do a 1 minus. And I get about that much. About 7%, blah, 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 and you're going to do a good uh, uh, closing statement. In a random sample of 20 NWSS females, Ms. Crane found a sample meet of $250. Do Northwestern students spend significantly more on prom? Well, how do we test signi significance? Uh, that sounds like a hypothesis test, doesn't it? So part B here is a hypothesis test. With step one, we state our null hypothesis and our alternate hy hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that nothing is different. Northwestern students actually spent $220, but the evidence suggests that it's more than that, right? Um, and that's step one. Step two, we weren't given a, a significance level. And you remember, hopefully you remember, how much that we use kind of as a default is a 5% significance level, which, remember, was 95% confidence level. Okay. Step three is to actually evaluate our evidence. And notice we've got a sample mean, and the evidence matches... Um, what we think the hypothesis is more, so anything more. This, is, um, this isn't this is discrete data, it's continuous data, so I don't put a greater than or, or equal to, but as soon as I see that, I know to use the standard error. As soon as I know I've got a sample mean, I'm going to use the standard error. Right? And that is 80 over the square root of 20, 20 people in the sample. And that's what's the standard error, 17.9. Hopefully I haven't made any uh, calculator errors that are can, can confuse you. If I do, I apologize. Uh, but you can ask about that in class, right? Um, and so, since it's a greater than, one thing that I have to do is, is go uh, 1 minus that. And then standardize. And this is when we calculate our, our z-score over the standard error. That's going to be 250 was the sample mean. 220 was the actual mean and 17.9. That value, if you clunk that into a calculator, watch it when you put it in. Um, to press enter before you divide or to use brackets there. I got that as 1.68. 1.68. These are rounded. Watch your communication errors here. Um, chart look up now. Three five. 
not 0 0.0465. So uh, there's the evidence. So this means around 4.5% of the time, 4.6% of the time, Miss Craig would find a mean of 250 or more from a sample of 20 kids. This isn't very likely to happen by random. And and now in step four, we evaluate that evidence. So notice basically we go with whichever one's lower, right? This one's lower, which kind of goes with the alternate hypothesis. So step three is less than step two. So we're going to accept our alternate hypothesis and reject our null hypothesis, which means this was unlikely to happen by random, which means NWSS students. Or there's evidence to show, we could say that, or we could say NWSS students spend significantly more than average. And then significantly, that's where we state our significance level. And that was pretty close, but I think we're, we're okay there. Uh, example two, probably a confidence interval coming, right? Oh, 42%. That sounds like a P, doesn't it? Or perhaps in this section, remember there was P hat too. Um, aha, sample, so it's probably a P hat, sample proportion. 42% of a sample of, of 60 Northwestern prom goers said they'd chip in for a handsome cab ride. What's the probability that a majority of them would chip in? Well, this sounds like it's binomial, right? We've got a binomial with n is 60, p is 0.42, and we're interested binomial, not binomian. Uh, that x is greater than or equal to 30, right? That's what we want to find out. But this is one of those ones that's way too hard to do by by binomial, right? Because it, it would be 31 calculations, right? So plus dot, 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 too hard. We're going to use the approximation if it's appropriate. And it is. Um, these are the things we check. All this, all these formulas are on your formula sheet too, folks. Don't, um, don't freak out there. Uh, what's that? That's way high. And remember, these two things were supposed to be greater than five. Um, and so it's okay. Okay for what? Well, it's okay to use the mean, which is n times p, which is just this fifty-two point or sorry, 25.2, and the standard deviation, which is NPQ. Point 0.42 and point 0.58. And that means now we can use, instead of this, probably that X is greater than or equal to 30, I can use the normal approximation. But remember, normal approximation uh, this is discrete data now, though, right? The number of people is discrete, so I got to use a continuity correction. There's the picture. There's 25.2. There's 30. And remember, are we going to include this? Uh, this disk that represents 30 at greater than or equal to. Majority is 30 or more, right? So we're going to use 29.5 as our continuity correction. That's the continuity correction right there. And so now, finally, I can do my Z score. Well, there'd be no way that Restall would put one this hard on the exam. No way. <laughs> what do you. X is 29.5. The mean was. 25.2, and the standard deviation was this number. Did I actually calculate this? Uh, yes, I did. That's about 3.8231. And if you're going to calculate it here and not in 
in the z-score calculation, write down a couple of decimal places so we can be reasonably accurate. And then I get a z-score of around 1.12. 1 subtract 0.86. This is a z-score lookup right on your chart. And that is about 0.1314. There's a blah, 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 blah. You do it. Um, last example. Last example of the year. Part B. Um, give a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of chipper inners. Well, remember uh, proportion formula. Plus or minus the square root. No, 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 no. Plus or minus Z star. Sigma. Pro. And remember the the textbook has a goofy way of putting this. I think they do something like this. Uh, Z alpha over 2, something like this. And then they actually put the the um, sigma proportion right there in the formula. They do something like this, blah, blah, blah. Same thing over here except for with a plus. Um, and this is the way that we kind of decided we like to write it. Uh, remember, for a confidence level of 95, the Z, uh, the Z score is 0.645. And remember, those values, those confidence uh, level and Z, Z score values, these are on your formula, formula sheet, right? 95% was 1.645, 99 was 2.575, and 90 was 1. No, 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 hang on. Uh, I goof that. 95 was 1.96 and 90 was 1.645. Um, plus or minus um, the Z score of 1.96 and then sigma proportion there was you can use that textbook form but I like using this one. He had Q hat over the square root of n. P hat was the proportion. Sample proportion was 0.42, I think, right? Yep, 0.42, 0.58 over the square root of 60. And you clunk that into a calculator and you get about 0.0637. 0 0.0637, and then remember this part's called the margin of error. And you can either leave it like that, 42% plus or minus the margin of error, and whatever that is, or you could actually calculate what the what the uh, range was as well. And that's and I'll leave that up to you to figure out uh, the ending, how you would like to to write that. That's it. Um, ask lots of questions. Exam is soon, and it's nice to see you're already studying. So that's fantastic. Now go do some questions on your own.